everyone. Hope you're doing well. Today my name is Robin Weldy and I will be showing you how to camouflage droopy eyelids today, otherwise known as hooded eyes. Um, so I'm going to try to relax my face here and show you. Do you see how prominent my eyelid skin is and it's almost drooping over my lashes. It's practically covering the lower movable part of my eyelid if I just really relax. As we get older, that skin just droops more and more. And I'm going to show you how to camouflage that. So now that I'm really relaxing, you can see how bright this is, how it's really kind of coming forward and it's very prominent. Um, so I'm usually pretty animated. I use my eyebrows a lot when I talk, um, which has caused me a lot more wrinkles on my forehead than you can see. Let me adjust my lighting here a little bit there. Um, so I naturally have pretty deep crevices in my forehead and I um, always have. So that's nothing that's going to change anytime soon. But I am going to show you how to camouflage and just make the most of what you have. So I'm going to be using um, some eyeliner here. This is an awesome eyeliner by Unique. It doesn't smudge. Once it's on, it stays on until you take it off um, with any type of a makeup removing product, um, any kind of oil, anything like that. So if your eyelids are really, really droopy, you can do what's called tight lining. And tight lining, sometimes you have to lift up your lid and you actually can line underneath the, eye, um, the lash line. And so you would line underneath here. Um, and that is going to take up less of your valuable eyelid space on the movable part of your lid. Um, I don't need to do that yet. Oops, what I do need to do is use an eyelid primer. Eyelid primer is your friend. It's just gonna help your makeup to stay where you put it. Um, our eyelid primer is really awesome. You just need the teeniest little bit. Some eyelid primers, any face primers, anything, can be um, more slippery and silicone-based. Some are a little bit more water-based. Um, everyone prefers something different. Hey, Rick, welcome. So you just want to tap this on from your eyebrow all the way down to your lash line. You don't necessarily need it on your lashes, but you want it where you're going to apply that. Um, if you're going to apply eyeliner, you just want it to get as close as you can to your lash line. And that's just gonna help your makeup to stay put. It's gonna help keep your eyelids moisturized and create a barrier between your lid and whatever you put on it. Um, I don't know if you've ever used a less than quality um, eyeshadow and ended up getting scaly lids or the skin, especially right here, maybe will dry out. Once that happens, it can be pretty challenging to rehydrate and get that straightened out. I've had that problem in the past. Um, in the 80s, when I used to wear a lot of eyeshadow and it wasn't the best quality eyeshadow, um, my sisters and I would all get that scaliness right there. Um, but I, I think that probably can just happen from irritation overuse. So it's really great to use a primer. It's just going to create that barrier. It's going to be a little bit tacky and just help your makeup to stay put. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and um, line my eyes the way I normally do. And I just try to get it as close to my eyelash line as possible. Because again, that's va valuable space we don't want to take up on our lids. Um, but if you have really small eyelids and, um, and not much eyelid space, again, just do the tight lining underneath. What that's going to do is it's just going to thicken your lash line um, it's just going to make it visually look like your lash line is thicker and that your lashes are more plentiful than they really are. So, 
There's mine. And then I usually go over mine later with um, like a eyeshadow. I'm going to attempt to draw a little bit of a wing here. Um, if your skin is really sagging, don't bother with that at this stage. Because I will show you a tip that's going to help you. If your skin is really down like how I'm doing mine right now by just relaxing my eyebrows, it can be a real challenge and that line that goes up is just going to go wah wah. So you may, depending on the um, amount of drooping you have, you may want to avoid that. All right, now my primer is still a little bit tacky, but mostly dry. So I am going to choose a color that is pretty close to my own skin color. And the color that I use often is this color called Discreet. It's by Unique. You can see it's pretty darn close to my own skin tone. So I'm just gonna use that on a really fluffy brush. And I'm just gonna put that all over my lid. And I am going to try <laughs> to do a really muted um, palette at first for like everyday wear. For those of you that maybe aren't really the eyeshadow types and that this is gonna be new for you, I'm gonna try to show you that first. Hi Jen, welcome. This color is really pretty. It's very natural, but the more I put on, you can start to see that peachy color just peeking through a little bit. All right, so I am going to um, use this camel color that is called Astute. It's a very light camel. And part of tricking the eye here um, and camouflaging these bags, there, you, get, you need to learn about the play on contouring and what darker colors do as opposed to lighter colors. Now, when we put a darker shade than, our, than the rest of our coloring on, it gives the illusion that something isn't there. So the premise of what we're gonna do here is that we are gonna put that darker color up right about here. And our actual crease is down here. And you may not even have a crease if your eyes are naturally this hooded. You may not even have a crease at all. So what you wanna do is create the illusion of a crease there. Hey Luann, welcome. In addition to that, by just putting that darker color, it's actually going to make it look like your eye socket is bigger than it is. So imagine a circle. And right currently, I'm gonna try to use a, a just this because it's a little sharper. Imagine the circle of your eye right now. It's gonna end where your lashes are if you're this if you're like this hooded. This eye is a little droopier than the other. If you're this hooded, you have slits. You don't even have a circle. You just have a slit of an eye. So what we're gonna do is draw the illusion of a big circle that ends where your liner is gonna be, which we don't have liner on the bottoms yet. And then we're gonna fake it that it's way up here. And we don't wanna go as high as our eyebrow, but that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna just fake it. If you want to, um, you can actually try drawing a circle. Um, and just for shits and giggles, pardon my French, I couldn't think of another way to say it. Um, I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna draw that fake little circle just to kind of help you out with a really light liner here. This is my eyebrow, what I've been using for my eyebrow pencil because my unique eyebrow pencil is getting very low. Um, but I'm just gonna draw that circle. Can you see it? That's about how high we're gonna take this color. And you can see already, if you look at this eye compared to this eye, the difference, 
this skin, at least on my camera right now, is, is looking more prominent, like it's jetting forward. And this just looks a little less prominent. So that's what we're going for. I may as well do the other one while I'm at it. And if you do this, you can just kind of play around. Eventually, it'll feel second nature. And you'll just kind of know on your face how it feels when you're drawing, kind of like your lip line. Like, you, you may be able to just kind of know what feels right when you're drawing on your lipstick. Um, you'll just kind of learn what feels right on your eyelid space. Now you can see how far up that is from my natural crease. My natural crease is way down here. I'm drawing that way up high. And that is how high I'm gonna take my color. All right. So when you do this, you want to use a tight brush. So this is a tight brush. The bristles are dense. They're kind of short when you compare it to what I was using first. Um, this is so fluffy, the brushes bend a lot. That's just gonna give you more of like a, a really light spray painted effect. Where this is gonna be just a lot more targeted, like a painter's brush, but tight. We're really going to be able to target what we want and where we want it. Another thing is if you want to give yourself more of an upturned look to your eye, you would start doing what they call an outer V. And that's where you kind of draw the color down here and then up here. And that's just going to give you more of that cat eye. Um, so I'm just going to take my astute color again. That was this really light camel shade and I'm just going to start creating the illusion and you see how now this skin up here right under my eyebrow looks more prominent as opposed to looking like it's hanging down to here with how this looked before. So we're giving that illusion that that eye circle, that eye socket is bigger. And it may seem a little counterintuitive, but it's just going to make it seem like we have a bigger hole <laughs> in our head, <laughs> like where your eye socket is. Now, you always want to make sure you blend, blend, blend. Now see, my skin is a little more loose right here. You can see how it's creating little dark patches right there. And then you just want to try to get them even. But I'm going to show you what to do about that dark patch. I have another one on this side where I'm kind of creating, getting a fold in my skin and it can tend to get dark right there too but I'm going to show you why we put that other color underneath first, that more skin tone color. We're going to use a fluffy brush again. If you don't have a brush that's this fluffy, use one that is this fluffy. You know, just whatever you have, that the fluffiest brush you have, or if you don't, you can try to use a tissue or something like that. And make sure your brush is clean. It doesn't have any dark color on it. And then I'm just going to buff where that darkness was. And because I have that color underneath that I started with, that's gonna buff out and expose that color underneath. And if it doesn't, then you can just apply a little bit more of that light color with your fluffy brush. In addition, we just wanna make sure this is blended. We don't want a stark line. Stark lines are not your friend. Everything should be brushed out and just a really soft kind of airbrushed look. Now, another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of a brighter color, lighter, brighter color right under my eyebrow. Um, because I'm so fair, um, I already kind of have that whiteness up there peeking through. Um, 
but I'm going to use a really pretty pale shade. It's actually in the Smash Smashbox palette. Um, this palette is called Cover Shot Matte Palette. And as we get darker, matte to satin is our friend. Um, when you use anything with a shimmer um, or an iridescence, you want to use that sparingly as, as we get older because that will actually showcase your wrinkles or crepiness that you might have. So if you really, really do want to use any kind of a, maybe it's the holidays or a special occasion or something like that, and you want to look a little glitzy and glamoury, just use it a little bit on the middle part right above your iris on your eyelid, the movable part of your eyelid. Um, so those brighter, shinier, shimmery colors are gonna make things appear to pop out. So I'm using this lighter color. It's like a creamy banana lemon. It's very, very light. Um, and I'm just gonna put that right under my brow as close as I can get to my eyebrow. Again, you don't want much of this because if you do, you're going to end up with the problem you were camouflaging to begin with because this is going to make things stand out, this lighter color. And if you bring it too far down, it's just going to have all that loose skin appear to come forward, which is not what we want. Instead, we want this to actually be highlighting our eyebrow bone and, and just make the appearance that that is what's sticking out the most and not this skin. And if when I turn sideways, you can actually see the skin is coming out further than my brow bone and it hangs down more. But I'm giving the illusion that this, this part is gone and this part is what I'm stand, having stand out. It's actually trendy too to, um, put a, that highlight around your eyebrow. So if you want to do that, you can. Just make sure you blend that out and that's just gonna help your brows to stand out even more. If you already have a very protruding, heavy eyebrow, um, you might wanna avoid that step. So again, I'm just gonna make sure my brush is cleaned off. I have an old towel I keep on my lap and I just wipe my brushes on that. And then about once a month, I actually clean my brushes with um, like dish soap or you can use baby shampoo, just whatever is really gentle. So again, I'm just going to make sure that this is all blended. You don't want any harsh lines. And you want to um, err on the side of bringing that dark color up as opposed to bringing that light color down. So you might want to just brush upward when you're blending those colors. So that would be my everyday go-to. If you're not really an eyeshadow wear, um, you know, you're not going for a glam look, this is what you wanna strive for. Now I'm gonna continue on and add um, some bottom liner. And show you how this just helps to make that eye socket circle look a little bigger. Can you see the comparison on my eyes? Now my eye socket circle is looking this big. And this is just looking a little more cut off. You can also use something lighter, like maybe that um, eyebrow pencil I used before. If you want it to look really natural, sorry, <laughs> I do that every time. My desk is very low. I can barely fit my legs underneath it. Um, but if you, if you want to just like use something that's more natural, like um, your eyebrow pencil or something like that, um, just to give that illusion again that your eye socket is bigger. People may not even notice, um, but you're just going to look like you have a brighter appearance. Bigger, brighter eyes. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to go a little more glam and I'm going to show you how I would draw up that cat eye. And I'm just going to try to do this in steps, assuming maybe you want to keep 
the natural shadow, but more have a little bit more of a cat eye look. So I'm gonna go back in with my camel shade here. And I'm gonna do that outer V I was talking about before. You could call it a seven, a V, whatever. I'm gonna just start applying this color to my outer um, corner and drawing it along my lash line really close. And I don't really wanna take it any further than my pupil. You can do the outer like third of your eyelid or bring it almost halfway but you want it to go from thicker to thinner. And again, I'm just doing more of a natural light look and then I will graduate to more of a evening glam. And you can see I'm pulling the brush from outside to inside because I want the darkness to be more on the outside. This is gonna help make your eyes look a little further apart. If you have far set eyes to begin with, you actually want to um, probably, you may not need the cat eye look, um, let me think. You actually want your darker colors to be more towards the inside. Um, of your eye and that will give the illusion that your eyes are closer together. And again, you want to blend because right now it just looks a little bit too like I have sh like lines going up. So you definitely want to make sure you blend. So I'm going to take my fluffy brush again and I'm just gonna, I'm kind of blending where the two meet, the, the V and the part I already did. And then I'll do this outer area kind of on its own because I still want it to be darker, but I just wanted to make sure it has a gradual blending. Here comes my dog, ready to tell me that time is up. <laughs> and so there's a saying that you always wanna do on the bottom what you do on the top. So I'm just gonna take what is already on my brush. Hello, do you wanna say hi? And I'm gonna go underneath, there he is. Hello, is it time to go out? You're telling me it's time? Go lay down, go lay down, baby. See, I only get a limited window to do live videos. So I'm gonna just take what's already on my brush and drag that on the bottom. And again, I've just increased my circle a little bit more. Don't look back there. <laughs> And eyelashes make everything look better. So until I do lashes, I always think it looks a little naked. Okay, so this would be another area and then I would do lashes where I would just kind of stop. And this could be a really nice natural either day or evening look depending on what your comfort level is. So now I'm gonna ratchet it up yet another level and do more of a little a nighttime glam sort of look. So I'm just gonna go a little bit darker with the color on my outer V. And I'm debating between gray and brown. So let me know. Let me know what you think I should use. I have this gray will match my outfit more, but the brown is gonna look a little more natural. So let me know, comment below, gray, brown. Gray, brown, which one do you want me to use? Hey Tracy, welcome.
gray or brown. Okay, I'm seeing a gray comment. So I'm gonna do the gray. I was gonna go brown, but I'm gonna go gray now. And I'm just starting it on the outer corner and dragging that in. And I'm starting low. And then I'm just gonna gradually Go upward and still pulling in with that. And then I'm taking it up pretty high to create that fold that is not there, that is not up that high. And the illusion again that my eye socket is this big. Now another little tip, if you have a color that you really want to use, like for me, I need to use warm colors and this is a little, this gray could tend to be on the more cool side. Add in that warmth. So I already started with a warm color. So I already have the warmth going on underneath and vice versa. If you look better with cool colors and you like a warm shade that you really want to use, then put that on the outside and then put the cooler color more on the, the inner part or the over your iris, the main part of your eye. So again, I'm just dragging that across my lid, not all the way, just about to my pupil. And you always want to blend. But what you do on the top, you do on the bottom. So I'm just going to drag that color across the bottom some. Trying to stay real close to my lash line. And that just creates that smoky look. But we need to blend, blend, blend. So I'm just going to take my fluffy brush. Blend this out. Now it's all about balance. So right now I still kind of look like I've got more color on the outside. Because I went so light here before, I just need to um, go back and intensify that color a little bit. And I'm gonna use the same color, this camel color, again. And I'm cleaning my brush on my rag here on my lap uh, because I was using that gray. So I'm just gonna go back in with that same brown camel and I'm just gonna darken that up a little bit here. So one color doesn't overpower the other. And again, I'm staying really high on my brow, on my, it's hard to know what to call that part of your skin. On the upper part of my lid, not quite up to my brow. And then I'm gonna blend, blend again Okay. Now I need to focus on what I'm gonna put on my eyelid. And I think I am gonna go with a more shimmery metallic just to show you where you can place these iridescent and metallic-y shimmery colors if you want to use them. You can either use your finger, I'm gonna go ahead, sometimes I use my finger, but I'm gonna go ahead and use this brush, which I've wiped off on my lap again. And I'm just, when I dip my brush, I usually just use one side of it. I'm not using the total flat end. Um, I'm usually just using one little side of it. I'm gonna get out my strong mirror here because I don't see so well. And I'm just gonna put that color right over my iris.
and maybe out as far as my whole wait the pupil is the black part is the iris the iris is the whole thing so yeah <laughs> for my iris um i'm not going as far as is this dark color on the outer v i'm leaving that alone losing bristles here so adding that shimmer is just going to give yet even more illusion that my eye is big and it's going to help this movable movable part of my lid to come forward and the fact that i added that primer ahead of time is just going to make everything stay where it should I'm going to use that same color I used um, on my brow for my inner corner just because it's very brightening. And I'm just kind of pulling that into the shimmer. I don't really want that shimmery metallic to move. So I pretty much just leave that alone after I put it on. And then I'm just going to reapply that up here and then of course you want to blend 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 again but I'm gonna leave that metallic alone and I'm brushing upward brushing that dark color upward but just a little all right so I've put so much on and this is a step you don't have to do, but I like to do it. It is a little extra. I like to, um, sorry, I'm sitting on my, <laughs> sitting on my eyebrow pluckers, tweezers. That's not comfortable. So this step is a little extra, but I like to add a little shape back in with eyeshadow and an angled brush. And so what I do is I just use a dark color. I'm gonna use this black. I could actually use even the same color I used on my outer V because I'm gonna wet this brush and it's gonna make that color way more concentrated. So I'm wetting this brush just a little bit and then I'm just kind of dabbing it off on my hand. I'm gonna just dip this in to the black. I'm just putting the tip in one side and then the other. And I'm going to reinforce this lash line. And again, if you have no eyelid space and you had to do the tight line, you would probably avoid this step. Or you could just try to do it on the outer part of your um, eye. Now, assuming that my eyelids are this hooded and that the skin is hanging over, it might be a little bit hard to draw a cat eye of any kind, but I find it easier with this method because a pencil can kind of get stuck. Um, it's hard to draw when your skin is really loose where this is just more forgiving. And just let that skin go relaxed and just try to draw it up and out. Need to wet my pencil again here. And you may want to um, get this long end of your angled brush dipped in the, and just try to use that long end to kind of more just stamp it on there. If you can't do this step, it's okay. You don't have to. And then I just like to take that back underneath and just reinforce that line. I'm keeping the smoked out look, but just 